Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Premier Uncut. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum which you should definitely all join. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of my Patreons. I'm going to be uh, buying a projector, so I'm very excited about that. I'm going to order it on Wednesday, and then hopefully I'll have a bit more space to run the show. I can have more of the windows actually open at any given time, rather than fiddling and faffing and trying to find windows like I am now. So hopefully that'll get improved in the next week or so. Uh, I do post exclusive Patreon videos of some of these things that I do purchase with their support. So check out Patreon, even if you're not necessarily a Patreon yourself. Shout out to Alistair, um, Billy... High Vault, Brandon, Brenda, Burn Fat, Chow Young Cat, Shareg, Dank, Darren, David Wayne Foster, roll down a little bit, Edwin, Felix, God Rockin, Jeronism, Kirsten, Matt, Michael, Paige, Rene, Rune, Sam, Sweet Equity, Texas Mike, FlatEarthChannel.com, Tina Baker and Warren. Massive thank you to all of you. So I'm now going to hand over to the Hangouts on Air. Hopefully there's some conversation going on. Hopefully open the mic on Discord as well, see if there's some people still hanging around. Man, I've been up since half past seven. How did your show go, by the way? Really good. Yeah, uh, Ranty came on at a later, at, yeah, after an hour. And he showed something really nice, a, uh, a test somebody did to emulate uh, the miraging effect. It was very, very lifelike. Incredible. So definitely check out my early bird show today. What number? And I even got Brenda in there for, for a few minutes after, yeah, and then after she repeated herself like the fifth time, I just kicked her out. But What, <laughs> what number early bird was that? Uh... Let's see, I think it was 252 today. 252, Flat Earth Early Bird 252 on destroying yeah. your plug on ARWIJN channel. So Arwin, Flat Earth Early Bird 232. 252. 252. Two. Yes. Thank two you for the plug. Two. Sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm Where's also this? digging into quantum mechanics, by the way. Digging in? Yes, literally engage in the studying of it. I never thought I would, but I am. Oh, good for you. Yeah, I've already found some interesting things in it. Like, uh, I'm basically scouring for Einsteinian misassumptions. Uh, and what, what, don't, they're, what's they're, this? they're in there. It's very what's this, interesting. What's this Einsteinian? What's this, what's this nonsense? Well, Started the, the Einstein-based uh, theories. No, no, no. The words, the way you say it. Einsteinian? Einsteinian. 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 That's, like, that's how he likes to say Einstein. Please be upon. That's how Einstein <laughs> said his name. Oh, yeah. Mate, so are you? Einstein, yeah. Yeah, if you say so. Einstein? No, that just feels so stale. Peace be upon him. <laughs> no. Peace be upon him. Pray for Peace him. Peace be upon him. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Sounds kaputish to me. Stick to the Musagags, 10th man, I'm telling you. <laughs> I risk it all, Nathan. It wasn't a joke, but you can think of it as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> See, they, they never get old. <laughs> I love Musagags. <laughs> Georgie Musa. So, oh yeah, so and Johnny, I did a... Johnny Globehead, what's up, man? What's happening, gentlemen, ladies? 
Shout out to everybody who didn't understand the uh, the end 10% of Bullbusters. I'm one of them. And a lot of praise, oh, yeah. by the way, QE. Oh, by the way, Bullbusters, can we do Saturday? I, I thought it was this Saturday. It's next Saturday. Yeah, we're still going on Saturday. Yeah, we can still do it. What happened on the end of Ballbusters? No, no, no. Just when you got to... It wasn't the end. I just couldn't remember exactly where, where to timestamp it. But at about... You're dealing with Professor Dave, and he's talking about the phase transitions of water to ice. And you're pointing out that it's delta G negative. Okay. Right. Hands upon I the think panel. I understood Delta G was freezing. Hold well on. Hand, hands up on the panel. Not you, John. Not you, QE. Anybody on the panel who could give me a concise explanation for what that meant, what I just said about a phase transition being Delta G negative, go. Let's see how we all get on. Like I said, all I got was Delta G is freezing. <laughs> I'm not even sure if that's right. I have no idea. I heard that, and I'm like, I need to ask John what he means by that. That's very technical. <laughs> if you break it down to simple, basic understanding, that would be great. Any more for any more? Yeah. Right. right, so there's a dude in the Bullbusters replay on the channel, this this uh, uh, the second channel on Nathan Oakley, and I asked the same question in the chat. Exactly the same, paraphrased slightly, but nevertheless, a guy in the chat gave me a, a reasonably concise summary in one paragraph enough for me to know he understood it and it, before he did that and before i asked the question he was showing his great appreciation in the same way that um that adam did and i was like ah, oh, okay okay so i was right adam is representative of the people it's not just adam that will get this um and he was you know ex all excited and pleased about what you were saying while i'm going I don't understand this. <laughs> I don't get this. But, you know, he did. And I asked and he qualified that he understood and was very... Uh, people are very pleased with what you did on Saturday. You know, obviously the elements that I took away from it are the, the way you highlighted certain aspects of it that I maybe wouldn't have picked up on, even if even having watched it. So, for example, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a fleeting moment where Bob says, I would tell people blah, 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 makes it very... You know, makes it very forthright that he's going to make this point and how he's going to make it. And then all of his people at the panel point out that it's the other way around. He's got it the wrong way around. I can't remember the exact point, but it was very funny to see Bob getting, you know, a, a brief humiliation. Because <laughs> he's a crayon muncher, right? Yeah, Bob, he's he's scary. That's He's really scary. Really? Most of these people are real scary when you listen to them and when and when they talk and their convictions and they're so Elmer Fudd, that scares the daylights out of me, man. <laughs> to, yeah, to be honest. <laughs> so does everyone, did, did everyone, Delta G freezing, what the heck was that? What? I don't know, man. <laughs> Describing the process of that phase transition as being delta G negative, that that phase transition. So it's not that it is freezing. It's just he's describing it as being delta G negative. Yeah. Okay. That's that's nice. I, I, I don't know what that means. I use the words. Cool. I'm a good parrot. Do I know Sounds what really those cool. words mean? No. Could I expand on what I've just said if someone put me to task on it? No. Definitely not. <laughs> But I can repeat it and not be called out on my my verbatim pretty much parroting of what was said being accurate. That was correct. I'm pretty sure I've paraphrased it well enough to not get called out. <laughs> but do I understand it? <laughs> Hell no. Uh, you think you could posture and, and get around it? What does the it's, Delta uh, stand well, for? I, I, that's an interesting question. And as you're a friendly, I'm willing for you to test that. Let's, have, <laughs> let's, have, let's see how I get on. <laughs> This is being no. recorded, by the way, so let's not humiliate me too badly, eh? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I won't do that. It, it's so unfair because, listen, most people don't need to know this. I mean, if you're not into chemistry and biochemistry and things like that, you don't need to know this. You don't need to go that far into the second law of thermodynamics. You just oh, don't. Isn't that nice? See, if, if, I, if this situation was reversed and I was you and you were me, what I'd be thinking now is argument from silence you little bastard 
Yeah, I'll humiliate you, all right? <laughs> no way. There is no point to that. None. So just in general, just, just so everyone knows, if they can go back and re-listen. I didn't think I went over that too quickly. So anything that's delta G negative is going to be spontaneous reaction. It has to do with Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy is the change in enthalpy and the change in, uh, minus the change in temperature times the change in entropy. Right? That's all it is. And any, th any answer you get with delta G negative, that reaction is going to be spontaneous. Now, if it's delta G positive, if those numbers add up to a positive number like it does with uh, nucleoside or nucleotide synthesis, protein synthesis, all those are delta G positive. That means it's non-spontaneous. Now, to get into a deeper, um, you'd have there's certain conditions where it's favorable for enthalpy and not favorable for entropy. You have to work those things out. We're not going to go down that road here. So all you have to know is if it's delta G positive, then the uh, reaction is non-spontaneous. Delta Wait. G negative, the, reac the reaction goes to uh, spontaneous. That's it. That's all you need to know. You, you were speaking to his claim that by observing the transition to ice that you've got order be being um, created spontane spontaneously. And you're, you were addressing that particular point that he made as utter horseshit, correct? Yeah, remember when I told you, uh, I think it was it was a couple months ago when somebody came out, I can't remember who it was. It might have been conspiracy cats that came out with the term order in regards to entropy. And that, that's been scuttled for so long. I mean, it was scuttled when I was in university. I gave it 20 years. It's probably uh, more than that. So anyone that says that, I immediately know that they're, the, they're a pretender clown, immediately. So order is a bad descriptor of entropy for many reasons. So right there, his argument was dead, and uh, the rest of it was just gravy. Yeah, it was an absolutely epic but it, pummeling. But it wouldn't it's... just be order, right? It would be order to chaos, something like that? No, 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 no. If you if you compress a gas, right? So you've got a, a chamber with a with a piston, and you compress it, and it's very very heavily compressed. It's at very high pressure. It's in no more or less chaotic of a state for being at high pressure. It's still bouncing around randomly in all directions. It might be doing it more rapidly, but it's absolutely chaotic. Now, when you release it, let's say you just pull the top off, that compressed air releases, and the entropy increases. Well, it's not going to a more or less disordered state. It's just entropy is increasing. Ah, uh, okay, I see. So I to see say what you mean. Chaos or disorder mean. to order or vice versa, it isn't an accurate description of the second law. It's just as simple as that. It's an outmoded way of describing it. Well, I, I think another way to help might help too. Uh, ice is a more ordered state of water than a gas or liquid is, but but there's less entropy, I guess. Or more loss, or whatever that word would be. I guess John can explain it better than I do. Because of heat, there's heat loss from ice. That's entropy, but there's more ordered state in ice than there would be. Am I getting that right? I'm no, you're talking right. about enthalpy. You're talking about the other side of the equation. You got to take the daddy, heat reaction. Daddy, 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 yeah, daddy. I know. You got to take the other, not the other side of the equation, the other part of the equation for enthalpy. The heat of reaction, that's a major player, right, in the whole scheme of things. So that's got to be accounted for. Daddy, gotcha, sorry, daddy. can't talk. <laughs> yeah, but we don't generally talk in these terms. So, you know, it's not often that you'll hand your wife a cup of coffee and say, be careful, it's exothermic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, uh, as I was digging through the intro to the quantum mechanics thingy, uh, that paper, it's, it's one of the early ones, uh, I figured out, I basically got a, a response inspiration to address uh, Spurskimo's claim that temperature could basically replace gas pressure. 
because I figured out that pretty much on the spot that there is indeed a correlation, but the correlation is asymmetrical. So if the pressure increases, then temperature will also increase, but it will never be as much as the temperature increase. And if you increase the, the pressure, then uh, maybe I'm switching it around. Like if you increase the one, the other one follows, but never to the same level as when you reverse it. So pressure follows temperature increase, pressure or, and pressure increase follows temperature increase, but never to the same level. So that clearly proves there are two separate things that can be interchangeable because they respond differently. Hey, Arwen, his, is his, entire, his entire argument is nonsense, man. No, but come on. Uh, this is just a technical piece. What do you think? Yeah, Arwen's I argument? mean, you could, you could go dig into it, but my word, temperature and the gas doesn't, gas pressure doesn't, or atmosphere, atmospheric pressure doesn't exist. <laughs> I know, I know it is ridiculous, but I figured out a way to point it out really well, I think. So do you think my analysis is correct? Yeah, One follow the other. I didn't listen close. I'm sorry, Arwen. It's really early in the morning. Um, I have no problem repeating. It's very simple. If Arwen, pressure before increases, you do, and temperature also increases, but not as much. And if temperature increases, pressure also increases, but not as much. So that's the correlation between the two. They're not interchangeable. Yeah, but there's. It's too ambiguous. You got to have. You got to establish the boundary conditions. See, <laughs> but in general, this seems to be true. Even the, the the guy that wrote the paper basically forwarded this that there is a direct correlation. But then I thought about it. Yeah, if you increase the pressure, the temperature does go up, but it's not that much compared to the amount of pressure that's going up. Well, if you warm something that's not increasing in pressure, that nothing is being added then the pressure will also increase, but the temperature will increase much more than that pressure. So it, they're not yeah. interchangeable. Right, but they're a result. Right? The ones so the that holds yeah, it out. The it's not oh, interchangeable. God. They are definitely separate things. Yeah, but one's the result of the other. Say, define temperature. Uh, come on. See, see, that's the key. Paul asked that question... I the the average temperature in the room, like uh, gum. That's. I, I'm just trying to point at the correlation. One follows the other, yeah, but yeah. not as much. Yeah, well, I'm so, not. I'm not trying. It's not a gotcha or anything. Paul had a good question the other day when he finally, you know, put him up against the wall and said, "Okay, what's temperature?" That was a very good question because that collapsed his whole idiotic argument right there, and that's why he didn't answer. Okay, well, if, if I had to explain it, I did read into this pretty much. Temperature is the bouncing of the molecules, the rate of it, compared right. to the rate of other things. And then if the rate is higher, then it's hotter than the surrounding. That's pretty right. much it's, it. And then it will expand also. It's a kinetic It's kinetic energy, right? That's it. When it boils down to it, that's what sort it is. Of, it's kinetic sort of, energy yeah, of the yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, sorry, sorry. It's just simple. I'm affirming you. You're correct. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just the kinetic energy. And if we're talking about gases here, it's just the kinetic energy of the gases. If they have higher kinetic energy, guess what? They're moving faster in all random directions. So what's going to happen? More pressure. <clears throat> in the middle. Exactly. More pressure well, and more heat as well. It's just that Our simple. That no, hold on, Paul. Oh, no, heat increases for extra oh, no, pressure. No, 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 that would be the point. He's, he's, he's using heat to explain it, Paul. So it's, it's not the consequence. It's the it's the thing that's preceding this. That's what I get for jumping back in the middle of something that I wasn't paying attention. That's all right. Don't worry about it. I just didn't want that to suddenly ruin the point. Listen, what, next time Spurs come on, comes on, just, just show them a picture of a barometer. Okay, it's it. <laughs> the argument's over. All right. He had plenty in his uh, presentation. He had uh, every example that I would give to rebut him visually, he put in his presentation. I, I didn't see it, the whole thing. So did he have a barometer in there? I'm pretty sure he had a barometer in there, yes. Okay. Hey, so, hey John, what, 
I'm sorry, real quick. I would say, wouldn't temperature be more of an arbitrary a number we apply to what would we consider heat? Heat would be more of a better descriptor than temperature because, like, the temperature outside, let's say, is 72 degrees. No, no. But, no, yeah. heat is is very, it's a raw indicator. It's our experience. Temperature is the entire spectrum of it. Uh, hold on, the spectrum is the arbitrary bit. The number that you attribute to it, or the scale, is the, is the bit that's arbitrary. Yeah, it's right. just a convention, but that's right. okay. But There's the no spectrum wrong, also wrong. points at the, the difference, because the difference between the things is really what makes temperature and the experience. Arwen, I believe Spur Schemo's main point was there is no container, it's temperature that's keeping everything, uh, the gases, the pressure on, on, uh, on this earth. Well, there's so, one the way that could happen, and that is if there is an ice dome. No, let me finish, please. Spur Schemo thinks he's discovered uh, something that he's only you know privy to and he wants to be the bearer of this news so he's trying to say if you're going to bring up his argument you've got to bring it up right it's not temperature only it's temperature to replace a container that's yeah, his but argument temperature, but temperature is the result of something else happening in other words so temperature that, that's that's preposterous of course the kinetic and it's the kinetic energy that's creating it. And that's one thing I was trying to bring up. I was, you guys missed it when they wasn't the show last week. But, you know, when some, once a particle starts to move because of kinetic energy, there's got to be a force acting upon it to stop it from moving. And if you say temperature, well, that's <laughs> it's the kinetic energy inside that molecule. So that temperature can't have anything to do with it. It's like a, you're going like you don't, it's, it's, you're, you're missing the point. That's what I kept trying to tell them. And they didn't get it. And nobody gets it. Yeah. So, yeah. And that was a good point, and everyone brushed by it, but that was a really good question. That would have stopped the argument. That's why I don't know whether they didn't know the answer to the question or they just wanted to sidestep it. It's so preposterous, I don't even know why we're talking about it now. Way to kill the conversation, QE. Oh, I've been doing it all morning. It's not just you. I've been, I did it already earlier. I brought up chemistry, and that could account for everything we see. You know, and that stopped the conversation. My wife loves it. She thinks it's ace. She has a damn good chuckle about what Spurs has been saying. She doesn't often comment on the show. And I, I know she's often in the other room listening in on what's going on, but she doesn't comment that often. But she just dropped it. I can't remember exactly. I have to try and wrap my brain to what she said yesterday, but she just dropped it into a conversation. It was like, well, that's because there's no pressure. And said it really subtly. <laughs> just to take the piss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> So it's it's twice that is in the last week, right? She mentioned Brenda and she mentioned Spurs. So the idiocy of their arguments, my wife actually picks up on and and has a good chuckle about. But like I say, she very rarely mentions anything to do with the show at all. What does? Yeah, that's really funny, Nathan. Okay, so what when Spurs chemo comes back on? What are you gonna say? Get out. <laughs> Besides that, <laughs> yeah, show a measuring device. Well, apparently, Bar apparently I'm supposed to. He knows about barometers, it's though. On a measuring device. He's already had that. He's just hand waved it already. <laughs> I know that. I know that. He doesn't listen. Yeah, to he's just going to say it's a man made device and that he can't trust it. <laughs> yeah. It's all your fault, John. No, it's not. That's the observed <laughs> phenomenon. Know, it's I not the observed it. phenomenon. The man-made device isn't the observed phenomenon. <laughs> I know. It's Brenda's fault. She's a phenomenon. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, Spurs is uh, conflating natural phenomenon with the scientific method and bringing it into a barometer, which is a man-made device, and says, well, that's not a natural phenomenon, so you can't trust it. Wait a minute, this, we're just measuring something, Spurs. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, hey, John, let, him go. let him go. He's got the ball tards on the ropes with it. They don't know what to do with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's gotten so bad, they think I'm Spurs soccer count. They think you're Spurs. <laughs> yeah. 
But what? Have they heard you speak? Definitely not. But yeah, I'm I'm Spurs soccer account somehow. Okay. okay. Yeah, I want to get this there. on the record. I want to get this on the record real quick. John, would you consider chemistry a science? Following the sciences. Yeah, chemistry is definitely chemistry, biochemistry, genetics, and quantum mechanics. Chemistry just falls under physics. All the true sciences fall under physics. Well, so I, why I would, would you say ask? If I was going to define, redefine gravity. I would redefine gravity as chemical interacting with each other, or chemicals or molecules interacting with each other. So that's how I'm going to define it. Gravity. Well, you're going to get into big trouble with that. <laughs> I understand. I know, I'm but that's how I'm going to define it. Don't I wanted do to it. ask you something, Paul, if you're still there. I'm here. I've got a quiet moment, so go ahead. Yeah, um, you mentioned something about Newtonian law, and um, for every action, there's an equal or opposite reaction. And you're referring that to um, Spurs Chemo's example, where he says that um, it's only temperature that causes pressure, when in actuality, the temperature is as a result of the pressure change? Is that what you were referring to? Well, more I'm saying is like, you know, we, I already kind of said it. I think that's, you know, the, um, the idea of, a, you know, kinetic energy is basically something moving, basically a particle moving. If I throw a baseball, there's kinetic energy involved. Now, the only way you can stop that par particle is something acting upon it. Something's got to act upon it to stop that motion. That's kind of what I'm saying. Oh, so you're at. talking about... You're talking about Newton's first law that states that an object, um, an object that an object will remain at rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external force. Is that what you're referring to? Well, that's to get the object moving, basically. So there's kinetic energy. It's potential energy when it's at rest, but then it's kinetic energy when it's moving. That's not what he asked. Is that what you were referring to, Paul? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I guess. I guess I, I would say yes. I have a problem with that first law because um, it states somewhere that an ob object that's in motion will remain in motion unless an outside force acts upon it. But that's not something that we see in objective reality. We don't see objects that are just in continuous motion. Like, that's, that's not possible. Well, the problem is, well, th th that's really easy to explain, though. I mean, like, um, it's called air friction. When I throw a baseball, the, even though there's the density of the ball that's going to pull it to the ground, the friction of the air is going to resist that forward motion. So in a sense, that the collision of those of, that, of the particles of air against the ball is going to slow it down. I, I'm getting a phone call, so you can – I'll try to listen. But go ahead. I'll get the phone call. Isn't it just well, – No problem, but that doesn't explain – that doesn't – I mean, that's an explanation for why a ball stops because of resistance to – the atmosphere, like air friction, but that still doesn't explain how an object um, in motion will remain in motion. It like, doesn't. how can you demonstrate that? I don't think you can. It's like like when you describe ideal gases when there aren't any. You know, it's just to make the the circumstances of the explanation make sense to a layman. Same goes for things like isolated systems. Well, there aren't any, but to describe the laws of thermodynamics, you need to have the situation controlled such that the concise explanation can follow. It doesn't mean that those are actual circumstances that can be put into existence. It's just a way of explaining things. Oh, right. I see well, what you're saying. So they're not, they're not referring to objects being in motion as being an actual thing. They're just using that um, to explain a further point that they're making. Yeah, in essence. Okay. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to create a set of circumstances to make that direct explanation actually come to fruition. But in the same instance or the same breath, there are no ideal gases. But we do have ideal gas law. You see what I mean? Right. Yeah, I see what you mean. I just found it odd that uh, they stated that something is going to remain in motion unless an outside force acts on it. Because that, I, that just doesn't make logical sense. I, like I understand what they I totally mean get now. it. I totally get it. And until John explained it to me, I felt the same. Right. Well, the laws of motion of Newton were not right. How many times did I got to say that? Richard, well, I didn't say it. Feynman did. Right, so. I was, I was actually going to say that next. I mean, it's just mainly um, 
the whole system starts to fall apart. And I was trying to get to that on even on Discord on Friday, to the even if, if Newton's laws don't don't apply, which I, that brings up more questions than answers for me when I start thinking about that. So, but if if they start applying Newtonian principles, then it starts to undermine their own argument. And that's I think that's kind of where I was going with it. Hey Nathan, no hey. Uh, oh. Spanish today. No, it's it's uh, summer summer term. It's no, there is no other than swimming. And my my uh, wife took Eleanor to a book club today, but that was at like nine thirty. I st I got to sleep in for the first time in about three years. It was wonderful. <laughs> three years. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Woke up, I was like, I didn't know where I was. What was going on? No one was here. It was great. I thought you were going to say like three months or three weeks. No, nah, three years. No, nah, three decades. No, I'm serious, man. My, Eleanor, everyone asks how the new baby is. And I'm like, yeah, she's wonderful. She's great. She's lovely. Adorable. Oh, does she keep you up at night? No, no, no. Well, why do you look so tired? Well, our oldest one hasn't slept since the moment we brought her home. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll be up. She'll be up. Oh, I shit. was up sorting out her nightmares that she was screaming. She was screaming something in the middle of the night. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> anyway. Hey, while, that, while that topic's still somewhat on the no. board, I was, when I was doing some research about electrons, there was a thing that they said was interesting. It said uh, electron potentiality or potential or probability. I thought that's interesting. John, can you unpack that maybe a little bit? Do you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea. I was going to say, that's so, you've loosely thrown some stuff at the wall. <laughs> Well, they were talking about how the, the where the electrons position. There's a probability factor to that where the electrons position is around the atom, around that's the correct. polar particle. What's that? That's correct. That's correct. There are what? no orbits. And Mr. Well, and Professor Dave, I was listening to Professor Dave late yesterday because I've never been on his channel, and I didn't know of him all that much. But he's got tons of videos, science videos, talking about chemistry and biochemistry. And stuff. He, he's he's going to be. He might be the star of the show coming up here recent more uh, in the future. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. So I haven't watched Dave at all, so I have no idea other than what you presented. I don't know what he's about. But were the stuff that was the stuff that he presented in regards to I don't know chemistry, for example, was it correct? Is he accurate? Does he know what he's talking no. about? No, obviously not. The things that he brought up uh, with abiogenesis and stuff, obviously he doesn't know what the second law is. So that's that's big red flags that popped up. So but what now, I mean is, now, I mean, has I he got have, a specialist subject yeah. that he is actually correct about? Say that one more time. Is Does he have like a specialist subject, something that he's got a field or whatever, that he actually knows his stuff and is always correct about? I don't know. Do, I have, do you like I said. What was that, flatsoid? Were you asking me? I was asking I said you. he's good in pseudo. Oh, pseudoscience. Oh, okay. <laughs> I haven't, like I said, I looked at his uh, catalog of video. I just briefly skimmed through them. I, I don't know. I haven't watched any of them. But all I know as of what he said on that hangout with Al K and Soundly and those guys, uh, obviously not. Right? So... But back to the uh, electron, it, the thing that I was watching, I was watching his response to Globusters uh, yesterday, and of course he put up all, uh, in, you know how I talk about SPD and F orbitals, right? Uh, and I always caveat that and say, they're not really orbitals. I always do that. And he had a screenshot of the SPD and F orbitals for something, and up in the left-hand corner it said, orbitals. Well... Right there, I know that he's a pretender clown, right? Because they're not actually orbitals. Now, they do describe it, the professors do, do describe it as orbitals, probably just to keep it simple, you know, for the rest of us. But they're not orbitals. There's no electrons spinning around any friggin' atom, right? It goes back to a probability distribution. So this is superposition again, then. <laughs> That, that's, that's what I thought was interesting when I was watching that about the, because I was looking into, I forget the name of it, I mentioned it earlier on the show, it's the Van Der Waals attraction. Do you right. know what I'm talking about? You got Van Der Waals yeah. and, and, and there's many, yeah. 
Yeah. And then he talked about it was the, the potentiality, the, the, the probability potentiality of where the electrons are that creates the, the bond or the attraction of other molecules to one another. I just thought that was interesting. And I, I mean, obviously, that's just, I'm just scratching the surface, I know, but I didn't. That's why I was wanted to ask you about it. I think later on in the years, they start describing it as a cloud. I like that description better because orbitals are just, uh, it's nonsensical. And in fact, it's just getting around this language thing that we have. You know, we just don't have the, remember I talked about this, we just don't have the language to accurately describe it. And then when you try to describe it using limited language, you're going to get into trouble. You mean like and this is force? one of those trouble areas. You mean like, you know, terms like fictitious force? No. Zanuck. <laughs> uh, no force sounds better. Hey, I got a question for you. Ask so him Timo again, Zanuck. What's that? Ask him again. I have, I have, I have a question for you. Back to Chemo's nonsense in his video. You guys were kind of referring to this. We, we don't speak for Chemo. No, hold on. We don't speak for Chemo. No, you were talking about him. And I, I think you guys brought it up before, but. Did anyone mention the fact that we have different temperatures all over the Earth that have very different pressures? Yeah, we have the same temperature. Yeah, I in some discussed areas it. We different pressures. Did, did, make his point. did you hear me oh, talking about it? Hold on, I haven't asked made his point yet. No, but, okay, we can I have two areas. We can have two areas that have the same yeah. exact temperature and have different pressures. So how does this temperature thing hold up? Yeah, Paul put that to him, but used it slightly differently and said you can have two different places with different temperatures and the same pressure. So it's the same argument. Yeah, everything be all over the map. They're not related. Sure. You're, you're absolutely right. It, it demolishes it. Why did no one bring temperature, that up? Though, temperature and pressure are definitely that's related. What's you're that? Not gonna get, you're not going to get around pressure and temperature not being related. You can't, you can't say that. Indeed, well, but only, the only relation real gases. is not real, linear. Real gases. For it's example, at Tahoe, at Tahoe, it could be 85 degrees and a very low pressure. At sea level, it can be a very higher pressure and still the same temperature. So how that's, does that work? That's true. I agree with you. I was just taking umbrage. I like that word. Taking umbrage with your statement that they're not related. Oh, did he oh, say no, they're no, not no. related? Of course they can be related. Hold on. Did, I didn't hear him say that. Did you say they're not related? They can be related, but they don't have they to. They are be. related. Always will be. Pardon? Yeah. Pressure and temperature is always. Well, I didn't catch how that. Do I have, how do I have yes. the same temperature two yeah. different but doesn't, doesn't Spurs say there is no such thing as pressure? Now, uh, he's trying to claim that they are, that it's like interchangeable. But as I started out talking about the subject today, I basically said, look, there is a relation, but it's asymmetrical. One follows the other. They are not literally interchangeable. Only, only for ideal gases. Asymmetrical. No, no matter hold what. On. If hold you on. change the temperature, then the pressure uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on. If What's the pressure, this? then the temperature increases, but one always follows the other. There is only no for linear an ideal gas. Hold on, Zanik, just one second. What's this asymmetrical? What are you talking about, Arwen? Well, asymmetrical, basically pointing at they're not perfectly parallel one follows the other and the other follows the one is that the right word it, no what's the right word proportional proportional right? proportional, proportional. Okay. Oh, hold on Zanik, are you saying and the same not word as me for it real gases only for ideal gases yeah yeah he is there are no ideal gases yes nathan he's saying the same thing he's just talking over you that's okay we're both saying the same thing it's fair enough Show me an ideal gas. That's what I thought. <laughs> what do you, what do you show, show us the force due to gravity. What is the Can't force chocolate having a good old poke. Ideal gas force, supposed to represent. Go on, Alwyn. An attraction force that you, you see when you drop something? What? No. Balloon, like a hot air balloon. Hot air balloon? Yeah. When you drop it, what? Force happens? due to gravity? Force, force due to buoyancy? Buoyancy. And drag. Buoyancy? <laughs> buoyancy. That's why it's yeah, like just, it's just his density. Yeah, 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 yeah. He tried to sneak in the presupposition. Yeah, he did with no, the word no buoyancy. 
Measurable yeah. forces. Yeah, it's alright. Let's not have this game. We were having a much more fun conversation. We've already smashed you on the Sonic, so... <laughs> uh, what is ideal? Like, to... like an ideal gas? I don't know that terminology. That, that, that is... Well, it's just like the word says. Ideal. So in, in a... In your fict in your, I, I like using your vernacular that you're familiar fictitious. with. In a fictitious world, there would be ideal gases which respond directly to um, the laws of gas. And so those you laws mean apply in to the actual gas. world. Hold that on, hold on. What's wrong with why, why are we picking on Zanuck on this? Who cares? This doesn't speak to any argument. All right, so it's a purely theoretical be construct be mechanism. There's no point in bashing no, Zanuck's head over real. there. There's no point in bashing. Zanuck's heading over this. There's no point. By the, by the, it seems like we're, we're in agreement anyway. So I don't really understand where this yeah, is going. Yeah, we're in agreement, I think. But what I would you, like you to know is... real gases and ideal... Yeah, but what's the, what's the point in Arnie this? I think Arnie was talking about what an ideal gas was or how pressure can be proportional to temperature. And that only happens for ideal gases, and ideal gases conform to... Uh, there are no ideal gases, volume. so... Like but that's... Said, that's I, I that's like gases saying, look, container. next to I a see. black hole, it wouldn't work that either. It's like that you're black claiming hole. something about oh, a fictional it goes, thing. It goes into your, your idea or your understanding of how you know, vacuum can be next to uh, a pressure. You, you mean so vacuum I cleaners? Well, ideal gases have a container, <laughs> in other words, to make it real simple. Hey, Dave is on this vacuum cleaner thing. It's it, he. I've seen it a number in in the two videos that I've seen. He's really pounding on flat earthers. Think that the vacuum is a vacuum cleaner. A nice straw man has yeah. got going on there. Hold on a second, Paul. Do you want to read out your your um, definition, please? Oh, I just thought it was interesting that uh, the the word and uh, ideal gas law. The very first part of the definition says hypothetical. So I just think that's interesting. Well, I said fictitious because I know you like the vernacular. Right. So yeah. to claim that it wouldn't do that within a thing that is purely hypothetical only is total. It doesn't make any sense. It's like well, saying, no, it's yes, Santa Claus wouldn't do that. Like, it's a specific condition. So now we talk about you have to have a specific volume, right? When you have a volume, it doesn't exist. So what's the point you have, in you have a container, putting you have a container, you can there. make a container and put gases in it and they react like ideal gases. No. You put it, there you is put no jar, ideal gases, right? The, the, the way they're using put ideal off, gases, I think. Put oxygen in the jar <sighs> and you pressure... I can't hear you, man. I, I can't know, hear anything. I've got a Discord working well, though, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's working really good. So is because I, pop, I popped in there to, to change them up uh, change them to the after show, and I mistakenly took my mute button off, and I was like, "Damn, that sounds better in Skype." Yeah, it does sound. Good. It seems okay now. Um, huh. so Zanik, they're using ideal gases, even though you're saying, "Well, that doesn't count because there aren't any," but they're using it to explain how gases behave, but simplifying it with this hypothetical ideal gas. Now that doesn't exist ever. There are no ideal gases. So to say it only applies to ideal gases is nonsense. Ideal gases are being used to explain the principles that apply in a simplistic way. Outstanding. Outstanding. Couldn't have said that but better they, myself. They exist in, under certain conditions, such as having a container. Yeah, the no, ideal no. gas law is just a pressure volume law. Don't don't freak right. out. He, it's he, not he, that big he, of a deal. He, you know, first thing you learn, first day of uh, thermodynamics or in physics, you'll, you know, PVNRT. All right. That's, that's the gas law. It's ideal gas law. And that just means that everything moves, like Arnon said, in proportion to each other. So the temperature goes up, pressure goes up. Okay. Density so it's an overgeneralization model, basically. Yeah. If you like. So for convenient it's use. A ben, it's a benchmark. If you want to use it, look at it as a benchmark. So it's a pressure volume law. So how do you have gas pressure without a container? <laughs> you have to have a force. No, don't do you laugh. Like you have a force. You can have a force and you can create gas pressure without a container. <laughs> really? Yeah. What can, we force see, might can we see that? Can we see that, please? Drive your car at 100 miles an hour and measure the pressure in front of your car. <laughs> you always got to go to the car. Why do you think planes, why do planes fly? Well, there's... Well, let's see, why do planes fly? Why do planes fly? That's what you asked. 
Hold on. See, green. hold on. Green. Gonna, hold green. on, hold green. on. Hold on. Mate, hold on. Don't it, just Eddie. laugh at him. Sonic, so you're saying as, as you're driving your car, right, it creates a, a pressure, correct? Correct. Yes, you have pressure. In front of your car, you have a, a high rate of pressure that is an area that is not contained by any container. How is I that? see. And, and behind the car, is it also the same? There's a low pressure behind the car. A low pressure. So high pressure in front, low pressure behind. Right. Does that happen with Earth as it, it travels can, it, through the vacuum? Definitely. It does. So Pardon the me? people on the back side of the planet, they're all dying. <laughs> and the people on the front, <laughs> they're all experiencing the high pressure like the car, are they? Where did you get that from? No, the pressure, you, you asked where you can see pressure next to a vacuum. Yeah. In front of your car. Because no, no, he no, asked no. you about Earth no, no, and you were responding with a car. No, no, without a container. And you've given an example. So I'm, so I'm now trying to qualify how that's analogous to your heliocentric reification model. Well, the pressure for the on the Earth is not created by the Earth moving through any kind of medium. Oh, well, why tell us about that then? Who cares? Because you asked about how I how you can have pressure without a vacuum. I just gave you an example. Without a how container. How can I have a pressure without a vacuum? I didn't ask. No, 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 well, let me, just, let me just crap all over it. I, I've toyed with you now. Let me just crap on you. Right. Where did you get the gas pressure in the first instance before the car started moving through it? <laughs> you mean where do you get the gas? What do you mean? Where do you get, did you get the gas? The gas is there. What I say, I'll say it again. In the first this... instance, obviously, which comes first, right? That car traveling through, creating a higher pressure, or the gas pressure in the first instance, which comes first? What's well, causing the pressure comes first, right? So you have the movement. Right. You have so, the so in yeah. order to have, so in order to have the gas pressure in the first instance for you to make a variant in it by pushing a car through it. Where did you get that gas pressure from in the first instance, Sonic? The car moving is the force. Oh, the car created the air that it was... No, Sonic, that's wrong. <laughs> no, that's creating, a for that's creating a force. Yeah, let's not worry about that. I'm worried about the gas pressure that you had in the first instance for you to start bearing it by moving a car through it. That gas pressure, where'd you get that from? To start the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the atmospheric pressure that the car had <laughs> to, to fuel the engine. Yeah, yeah. We dropped that caused it. <laughs> so where did we get that gas pressure from? The gas came from the plants, came from the ground. What are you asking? I don't understand your question. Yeah, but it needed to press on something, didn't it? It needed to press on something. You're mumbling there, Zanuck. <laughs> no, what are you asking? I don't, I don't understand your question. I'll say it again then. Get, where the gas In the from? first the gas instance, the where did you get the gas pressure from to begin with? In the first instance, at the start, at the beginning, where did the gas pressure come from? How many more bloody ways can I phrase it? <laughs> yeah. It came from the oxygen or the carbon dioxide coming out of the ground. And pressing on, and pressing on what now? <laughs> pressing on itself. <laughs> pressing on itself? No, no, it expands in all directions. Do you not understand... How gas works until at a fundamental level, Zanik. Let's just school him while he rumpuses me. Do you not understand how gas works at a fundamental level? It expands yeah, in all directions yeah, randomly. Yeah, go ahead. Doesn't, doesn't press on itself to create a pressure. It needs to press on the walls of a container, Zanik. Or has a, or a force. Isn't it a container? No, no, no. We, 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 we're going around with circular reasoning now, aren't you? You're creating a force that's, in that's gas pressure gas. and then rumpusing me when I crap all over it. Yeah, you're creating a force in existing gas pressure... And I'm just, ask, just asking where that gas pressure came from in the first instance. From gravity. Oh, from gravity. What's that? <laughs> What's that? Gravity force. It's a force that acts on the pre acts No, on the it's gas not force. a force. I thought we went through this when we battered you about two weeks ago. It's not a force, Zanik. What part of this aren't you getting? Do we need to get George Mooser over here? George, wait, Zanuck, I, I, I didn't think gravity. I thought you said gravity causes the force. Here we go so again. Now it, it, now it is the force. force. Causes the force. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let, let's let's wait a minute. Let's we can we can or let's camp here for just a quick second. Every force there has to be some form of interaction with an object. Like me picking up my remote, I'm applying a force to the remote to pick it up. I'm applying a force. Mm -hmm. I'm pushing. What's the mechanism that's creating this so-called force that you're talking about, Zanik? What's the mechanism? You want to know what? You want now, to know will what he the pick of the forces? A, <laughs> Einsteinian mechanisms, or B, 
Reverend John Michel slash Cavendish mechanisms. Which will it slash be, ladies C and gentlemen? No, Vote slash, now in the chat. Slash, C slash CV boys. Go, Reverend John Michel Cavendish. Hold on. Reverend Cavendish, John Michel Cavendish slash CV boys. That's the whole thing. Oh, boys, what did I miss? Step what step did I miss? Even. I'm sorry, Zanik. We're rumpusing you, but we don't care. Are you throwing another name in the, in how, the damn experiment, how accurate, John? Hold on. How accurate do you want to be? How yeah, accurate do you want to be? Just a, I'm a, just a monkey in the wrench. <laughs> yeah. How accurate do yeah. you want to be? Look, okay, let's get this train wrap back on the track because Paul's asked a specific question to you, Zanik. Nobody is rumpus, Zanik. What's the mechanism? Mass attracting mass. Yeah, what's the mechanism? The attraction of mass acting <laughs> against mass. <laughs> if mass attracts mass, then mass attracts mass, 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 mass attracting mass, mass, mass. That's now fascinating. You know, who's, who's mumbling now? <laughs> what's mass then? <laughs> what's mass? Let's if do this. Mass, is fun. You're like a little, you're like a mouse force. being toyed with. You don't accept the force due to gravity. You don't accept that if, force. No, no, we don't, it, though. It, it's if That's mass, then proven. mass attracts mass. That's correct. That's correct. If mass, then mass attracts mass. Uh, what's the mechanism mass within the mass, mass that's ca really ca causing the attraction? What's the mechanism within the mass causing the attraction? With then a magnet, I can say magnetic field. Hold on, let him answer, Paul. What is the mechanism of mass attracting mass? It's an attraction. It, well, they've it's described it in mass. the Einsteinian, which, which is the next level, as bending of space-time. So then we have a uh, oh, that's what I was right. waiting for. Bending in space time. Yeah, so I get, oh, I no, I'm sorry. Can I explain it? I well, no, because he's just said the bending in space time. The accumulation of mass causes a, a, like a, a little ripple, a push within the fourth dimension, causing things surrounding it in the third dimension to oh my god <laughs> like trampolines okay right wait, wait, what's wait. the problem <laughs> what's the I problem got it right. that's exactly you how they yes all done you were talking about this earlier zanik what's the problem with the fourth dimension fourth what's the problem with it home. You what's the, the problem this time the fourth dimension is time we all he, know the three dimension you. but you guys yeah, don't it Zanik, what's you the problem earlier. fourth dimension is time that's where we're starting to zanik 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 try to control yourself <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem with the conceptual medium being the cause of things? The medium is not the cause of things. What's the problem with the bending of a conceptual medium being the cause of things? There's no problem with the bending of space time. <laughs> <laughs> you could bend time, huh? Let, let me let me ask again. What's the problem with the bending of space time? In brackets, a conceptual medium being the cause of things. I'll give you, you a hint. The, the, the problem is scientific in nature. Problems what? Hold we? on, hold on. Let Zanik answer that. I just wanted to add. The, I'll give you a hint. The problem is scientific in nature. Oh, it is. No, it's not That's going to be interesting. Hold really. on a second. Let Zanik answer. No, you're you're going to go back to grade school scientific methodology to try to scientifically. That's not what he asked. Something? Ask him again, Nathan. I've forgotten what the question was. My wife came in with cherry coke. <laughs> well, I can I can ask, I can ask it a different way. This this might help. No, How I, does, I, ask it. I remember. Wait 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 wait. This, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask it a little differently, but I think it's the same idea. How does height, width, depth, and time have any causal power? According to Einstein, they do. <laughs> According to Good Einstein, answer. that's your answer. According to Where Einstein, does that? <clears throat> because when you bend does space it? time, mass will appear to attract to it, uh, each other. Yeah, that was that is his claim. But where does he say exactly what you just stated? Hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a different question. We have causal power. I, I want to see a quote for that. What does he? What does he describe causal that power? geometry as, Zanik? What's his description? How does he term that geometry? Length, breadth, depth, and time. How is that geometry termed? The bending of space time. What time no. are you looking at? No. The geometry. Know, the geometry. What's the geometry called? I don't know. What is it called? It's not Euclidean. I, it's not. Well, yeah, okay, there's a clue. John's giving you a clue. It's not Euclidean, right? 
Einsteinian? Are you talking about Einsteinian? Theory? Yeah, That's length, right. breadth, depth, and time. What's that geometry called? You, you could have Googled it by now. I don't have Google accessible right now. No worries. Let's have, have a little interlude. I love these. Like talking up Google, I'm actually having a conversation with you about don't this. Be on, be on mute, though. You've got a very loud um, typewriter. Doom, 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 doom. Well, while you're doing that, I could ask, how do you bend height, width, and depth? How do you bend that? And also, how do you bend time? I'd like to figure that out, too. You can't. Their concept. He doesn't know the geometry either. I got another question for him. Just, just I'm going to flip the question. How can you have a vacuum without a container? Uh -huh. Where do we, have a, where do we have a vacuum without a container? Where do we have a vacuum without a container? That's what he's asking you. We don't have a vacuum without a container. <laughs> Sweet, thank you. So the sky's definitely not a vacuum then? No, we, I didn't say there's, there's small pressure gradients from the ground all the way up to space, but that's, that's not vacuum next to a container. Uh that's not vacuum next to pressure. What are you talking about? I did, yeah, that's there's... the gas pressure gradients isn't a vacuum. I said, how do you have a vacuum without a container? We don't have vacuums without containers. It's not, there's Thank no need you. for a vacuum. Excellent. Excellent. Sky's definitely not a vacuum then. No, it is a vacuum. We well, can that's measure. just a fundy assertion. You You've about? just declared, well, you're We've double speaking. we 14 PSI at sea level and we measure vacuum at, at any altitude you want to go to. Yeah, that's well, fundy belief. Zanuck, you literally just, just said you can't have a vacuum without a container. It, it, it's not literally no just need. said that we don't have, we don't have a situation where we need a container we have gradients due to force you just contradicted yourself by the way no, just no. want to let you know we have yeah we have yeah. gradients of pressure yeah. there's no vacuum to pressure yeah there's no vacuum to pressure anywhere it's yeah not no it's yeah you just contradicted yourself you're holding two mutually exclusive truths at the same time at 100,000 feet, we have a little over a tenth of a PSI. It's a vacuum. Would you Here, not we agree? Go again, talking about That's PSI. Nice. So we've got, uh, got pressure then. That's nice. Yeah, pressure. we know. That's we have nice. pressure at sea level. We have lack of pressure at 100,000 feet. So they, they exist over great distances. Yeah, and then you extrapolate that out to a fundamentalist belief that the sky is a vacuum, even though you've already declared that you can't have we've a vacuum without a chamber. You've already measured the vacuum. It exists. How can you deny it? Well, no, it doesn't exist. Well, I don't experience a sky vacuum. We have vacuum at 100,000 feet. And we have 14 psi. You're just level. declaring it. How is that not, how is that not known it? by everybody? It's not known by anybody. It doesn't it's exist. It cannot everybody. exist. You you're rumpusing my replies because you're triggered because it's part of your religious belief. No, and you that's troubling for you. But you won't listen no to pressure. it. You've already declared you can't have a vacuum without a container. But then you simultaneously declare that the sky is a vacuum, a containerless vacuum. Well, that's horseshit. It's double speak. It's holding contradictory positions. And now you're very triggered because the cognitive dissonance is being recognized by you and it challenges your religious belief. You can measure it. Kindergartens measure it with balloons they send up to, up no, to high don't. atmospheres. No, they don't. They measure a lower pressure. Which is a vacuum. No, it's not. Oh, really? How does your vacuum cleaner work? What pressure do you think that? <laughs> oh, Professor pressure? Dave. Oh, Alert. it seems, Dave, Dave, if you're watching this, mate, it seems that it's the fundies on your side that are getting accused, uh, getting confused about vacuum cleaners. <laughs> you need to have a word with people like Zanuck here. You don't seem to be listening to, maybe you've spent too much time listening to just fundies on your own side, and you're starting to confuse them with the opposition. Zanuck here thinks it's like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, the vacuum cleaner is just a differential pressure, very small, by the oh. way. We're yeah, talking about to do with vacuum. Differences in pressure. Yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, zero pressure, pressure. Up at hundred thousand feet. Yeah, we know. Zanik, Zanik, we know, but we're being charged with not knowing by Professor Dave. We understand that the gas pressure, the thing that would require the antecedent of a container in the first you, instance, the gas pressure, pressure while he rumpuses the shit out of me, is pushing the dirt into the chamber once it's evacuated we understand that that's how the principle of a vacuum works we all get that but you you seem to be comparing it to space the sky vacuum you fundies believe in that's not us doing that that's you on the globe side 
just for how Professor does, how, Dave's how does benefit. Lower pressure, is that how does it? A lower pressure not, not for not you. Give you a vacuum. We, we, we don't want the conversation with you. We're pointing out in the third person to somebody who may or may not be watching. Professor Dave, a Dumbo, who thinks that we think it's like a vacuum when it's you on the globe side, which you a are. A vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner, that's what I mean. Vacuum cleaner, just a differential pressure. Just a differential pressure. We know. That's why vacuum cleaners work. We know. Okay. Well, let's so stick, how does that let's stick with that. Let's, let's, let's stick with that. Power let's... inserted by the motor. Oh, so where's the motor in outer now, space? Now, let me ask this question. Do you have a vacuum cleaner without a container? <laughs> <laughs> that container. Of course. You don't need to have a bag on your back. If you open the bag up, you have a vacuum without a container. Yes. And where is the, the, the vacuum itself going, Zanuck? He thinks the game, this colors, is great. He thinks the, the game the game into the bag. Part a negative momentum on the air, which creates a vacuum. Yes. He just he uh, thinks the game into the bag. Zanuck is through the trash for evidence. You don't need it. You don't need to. You don't need to collect the uh, dirt. You can have it just throw out the back end. There's a vacuum on one side. Just <laughs> into yourself out, out the back end. That's that's yeah, good. The job. Hoover, <laughs> the Hoover itself, the machine is still a container just because it's not got a bag anymore and all the filters get clogged <laughs> doesn't mean that it's not a container oh, the jet engine. it's called a propeller in front of an airplane there's a vacuum <laughs> on one side and a pressure on the other that's, that's nice. how airplanes fly that's how propellers work that's and there's no container the, the engine housing's not a container what's that it's not really a vacuum either it's just no, a it's open, print. Right, open, exactly. open in the front open in the back it's open it's, a a it's open it's not a vacuum. i think xanax my favorite go over <laughs> it's just fun. Do you, do you not agree that there is pressure in front of a propeller? And That's lovely. How do you have gas pressure without a container? <laughs> Create a force. Have a force. Create a force. Yeah, but we went force through this earlier, Zanik. We got to the can. point where I asked you where you got the gas pressure from in the first instance. And of course, because that's the losing end of your argument, you obfuscated it. I haven't obfuscated anything. You're the one that's trying to obfuscate it. Oh, no worries. I'll ask gosh. again. Where did you get the gas pressure in the first place? From the force. There is no force of gravity, so no. Well, of course there is. You can drop something and show that force of gravity. Wait a second. How do you get gas pressure from a force? Yeah, that's a good point. You have gas. How do you get gas from a force? Gas pressure. Well, you have to have I gas first. So how do you get gas? Hey, rumpus, rumpus, rumpus. How do you get gas from a force? You get gas first, and then you add a force to it and get gas pressure. Yeah, so we're That's asking you... where you got it from in the first place. Not the force, the gas pressure. The gas? The gas comes from the ground. Yeah, and what's it pressing on now? Itself. It doesn't press on itself. It expands in all directions. You fundamentally don't understand how gas works. This is, what, high school level? Gas expands in all directions. It's got no bonds. It's not pressing on itself. Yes, it might collide with itself, but ultimately the pressure... Is the force it exerts on the walls of the container. The force is already there, and the gas released into that force will create pressure. It's that simple. This is, this is grade school, not high no, school. Yeah, it is grade school. It's grade school. Grade school. Not getting. Anik believes you in the have pressure. You have a force you know already existing. Is. Then you add, you add gas, and you have gas pressure. What's That's a little school? better conversation. Go ahead. What's uh, grade school? Do don't, we don't yeah, have that here. What, what's, what's grade school? Grade school here in the States, you have grades. Uh, what we generally refer to grade school as first grade through sixth grade. So what's the age that you end grade school? Eleven. Yeah, yeah somewhere it's like... around. It just depends. Somewhere eleven or twelve, right around sixth okay, grade. Okay, we we call that primary school. Okay. Yeah, right. Primary school. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I've got a diagram of pressure. Um, it's from NASA, their their favorite um, gods of. Um, Hold on, we just check science. before I put it on screen. Are we okay with using NASA as a reference, Zanuck? Are you cool with them? What's that? The NASA, some fundy globe heads, believe it or not, actually decry NASA. So just before we use them as a source and provide a citation from them, is it okay by you, or do you also like we? typically would say they're lying bullshitters they just make up traveling out to a place that can't exist this is, this is kind of simple stuff right we don't need to talk about are you, you okay with nasa life. are you good with nasa or not in some areas not all areas would you be okay with them defining what gas pressure is yeah i'd probably be okay with that ah, okay you're up paul elementary it's six, this we're talking about sixth grade physics this Go is ahead. crazy that they actually put that up 
Would they say yeah. this has well, been I, out? I, this it, has it, been out, Arwen. <laughs> Yeah, this is, no, but this is the the actual delusion in full glory. Yeah, just just out in the themselves. open. Out in the open, they debunk themselves. But go ahead, Zanik. Can you say it, Zanik? The, uh, or do you be sure? Okay. Of the, uh, do, do you see it at all? I, you're muffled really bad. Can you see it? Where, where's the uh, citation? I don't see I'll, it in the Discord. Oh, I'll drop it in Discord. Oh, oh, hang on a Discord. second. Sorry about that. Give me just a second. Yeah, It'll be in the live stream. In very, com- very conveniently, the force seems to be pointing down from above. Well, that's not how it's that's that's the supposed force to work. Gravity. That's the force anyway. due to gravity. But either way, even in this diagram, there's a there's a mechanism there. There's some kind of like a mechanism that's pushing down. Just remember, we talked about this mechanism thing. Yeah, the force due to gravity oh, is There's a mechanism is even in this I mean, diagram. You know that, right? He's still on the force know, due to gravity. gravity in the hey, diagram. Chocolate, can you believe that? The force due to gravity, yes. Chocolate, force due to gravity. Force or you can have gravity, force, baby. Yeah, for, you, have, you can have centrifugal force as well. Hey, Paul. Okay, what's just, the mechanism? Paul, could, could you just read what it says underneath mechanism? what looks I like a... Spin a I can spin uh, you in a... Shut up, Zanik. Yeah. Right, can you just read the sentence that's underneath the piston-looking thing? In red, right yeah, hand side pre- of your diagram. Yeah, pressure force acts perpendicular to enclo- enclosing surfaces. Okay, which one is it? I get a. Mm. Okay, there it is. So, what what are we looking at here? What's the problem? Look at the NASA one picture. Look at the NASA p- picture. It says gas pressure. Right. Just look at that. Okay, there's a force on that on the intertube on that plunger, which is creating a pressure, and the force is perpendicular right. to all intended purposes. Correct. What you didn't say that word enclosing it says. Yeah, enclosing. That's, that's an example of that's an I, basically ideal gas law follows that type of uh, model. Uh, oh no worries. Do you want to show us an example where you can have gas pressure without a container? Because NASA seems to be implying that you need it to be acting no, you perpendicular you gas to uh, enclosing well, surfaces. That's what NASA say. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? You can have you were me while I made my point, weren't you? Oh, weren't you, you, weren't you, Zanik? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Zanik? Or are you talking all the way through everything I say? Because you you're question, saying, can responding. I hear you while I make the point that NASA, let's see if he starts talking, makes it clear that pressure force acts perpendicular to enclosing surfaces. So do you have a citation for gas pressure without enclosing surfaces, please. Also, why he's trying to figure that out. Why he's trying to figure that out. If you look at the small scale, it shows an extra individual particle is coming from the left direction at an angle and then it collides with another surface that surface, which would be the opposing force, and then it reflects in the opposite direction. So what would stop that particle from going in the opposite direction? And you're saying some kind of force. Well, in this diagram, it seems to be some kind of hard container of some kind, but you've got to say there's something that's got to stop that particle and that velocity, because it's got force, what you, what you there's velocity and force. What are you, what are you saying? You're right. saying that container that's holding the gas is doing what? If that's correct. Container, yes, yes. Container, that's correct. No, this, this this example has it. You you do agree that you can have pressure in a container. I think we all agree that of that. It's so a necessary. You, you've never seen gas pressure without a container. Is that the problem? I'll ask you again. Yes. You're saying I'm, I'm trying to listen a force to can act on the gas as a container, analogous to a container, and I'm asking you for a citation that defies what NASA says. They're saying pressure force acts perpendicular to enclosing surfaces. What you are defying is that definition when you say you can have gas pressure without it pressing on enclosing surfaces. So I'm asking you to get a citation to back that fundamentalist belief. And the demonstration. He's rumpusing the whole time. He's not listening to me. He's rumpusing. Not, are you going to let me answer? 
Yeah, well, I'm making a statement, and when I took you off mic, I could hear that you were still muttering and mumbling and talking through my concise explanation of what we are asking for. I'm asking you, Zanik, the rumpuser, to go and get a citation that backs your claim that gas pressure is, unlike NASA's description of it acting perpendicular to enclosing surfaces, in fact being retained by a force, which is what you're claiming. Yeah, let me answer. Hello? Are you going to let me answer? Go ahead. We're waiting. Ooh, I've been trying to talk for the last five minutes. We've been asking the same yeah, question. That's over over somebody why it is that for, was asking the question. When it gets quiet, yeah, that's, you your, that's your time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ionized oh, gas is a plasma. That's a straw man and a false equivalence fallacy. Ask him that? the question again. No maybe. worries. So what I want, Zanik, is a citation that backs your claim that you can achieve gas pressure by a force acting, as opposed to what NASA describe as a force perpendicular to enclosing surfaces. Nathan, 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 Nathan. NASA has described one condition where there is pressure for a simple grade school demonstration. This does not mean you can have you cannot have gas pressure without a container. Yes. That's your claim. <laughs> That's I don't exactly you, what it means. I don't want you to repeat your claim six more times, Brenda. I mean, Zanik. What we need you to do is now back your claim with a citation, which we will put to the test once we've got it cited. Something that flies in the face of what NASA make clear. Pressure force acts perpendicular to enclosing surfaces. And you're saying that's one example. That doesn't mean you can't have it without the enclosing surfaces. Yes, we understand your claim. Now we're asking you to back your fundamentalist belief that only conforms with your sky vacuum with a citation, please. And demonstration. Yeah, we'll, we'll, test, we'll put it to the test. I disclose that. What a centrifuge? get anywhere close to uh, emulating such a setup don't think a vacuum can be established that way but still maybe that's you what don't think a about. vacuum can be established what way by using plasma no, don't get arwin don't get him off he no has worries. got a question put to him sorry yeah, i can can't help it it's no problem i'll just say it again i don't mind saying it making it absolutely crystal clear what i'm asking for because zanik makes a claim that a gas can achieve pressure when acted upon by a force. NASA makes it clear that pressure force acts perpendicular to enclosing surfaces. I'm asking him to find a citation that defies what NASA says and conforms to his fundamentalist sky vacuum belief that also flies in the face of NASA's explanation of how you achieve gas pressure. Over. Okay. I think we lost him. No, I'm still here. Okay. So what are you waiting for? What 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 is well, what's happening, are we? I had a, I have to find a citation for you. You're looking for something that's pretty elementary, that almost is too basic. But let me. Uh... Okay. What what's actually happening, Arwin, is. Once we get to the nub of the question, yep, I back your claim. That's the question. Back your claims, Anik. Right? We get oh, a lot of. Right here. I'm. Hold on. Hold I'm on. trying Hold to on. do like now. Right? He, he, what he's heard is this might be a repetition of the question, so I'm not going to weasel my way out of it. So I better obfuscate and start talking quick, sharp. When I've gone silent for the last ten seconds and had Arwen asking what the holdup is, when it comes to the clarity of the point being made concisely by me. It's very important that he talks and makes it clear that he's being talked over when he's actually interrupting so that he can play martyr so that he can claim that he hasn't been given an opportunity when actually when it's made really concisely and clearly for the third time by me and then there's a pause for him to give a reply the silence he's got nothing he can obfuscate that's what he can do and that's what he does he can claim that he's being muted 
and talked over. He can do that. But what he can't do is answer the bloody question. He can't demonstrate gas pressure being maintained by force. It's a bullshit, baseless assertion. You can't back it. It's a fundy belief that he's got because he believes the sky is a vacuum. And when put to task, he'll just obfuscate. That's all he's done. He hasn't given us his example. He's not gone and got a citation. He's muttered a little bit about how he's got to go and get a citation and moaned that I'm talking over him and he's not getting an opportunity to talk. Opportunity for what, Zanik? You're going to give us it? Is that what you're moaning about? Give me it now. I'm going to shut the fuck up right now. You give it me right now. I got it. It's right there, tough guy. Right there in the chat. It's right there. Go read it. Knock yourself out. Me? You give it. It's your citation. All right. Let me I'll read it to you. Okay. So. From. The Earth's atmosphere exerts a pressure as does any other gas. We do not normally notice atmospheric pressure. We are sensitive to pressure change. For example, when your ears pop taken off of a flying landing, when you drive under, dive underwater, gas pressure is caused by a force exerted on the gas molecule, colliding with the surface of objects. Although the force of each collision is very small, any surface applicable area experiences large number of collisions in a short time, which can result in a high pressure. Yeah, the that atmosphere. Backs, that backs our claim. So unless you're saying that the atmosphere has got a surface area, as per your citation... So you're saying that the atmosphere has got a surface area to press on? The, the surface of the Earth is the surface area. No. Yeah, no, 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 you stupid retard. <laughs> We're not talking about the ground. We're talking about the sky. This is what they do, you see. Now he's gone immediately to the ground. We're talking about the sky. At a fundamental level, he doesn't follow the conversation. We're not talking about the bloody ground, you stupid fool. We're talking about the sky. Does the sky have a surface area as per your citation? That's the ground. Not the ground, you stupid Dumbo. <laughs> you obfuscating moron. We're not talking about the ground. We're talking about the sky. What don't you understand? At a fundamental level, we're not talking about the ground. Of the earth. I, I think he's that? trying to mentally he's avoid spirit. looking in that direction within his mind. By this state you get, we're talking about the sky, dickhead. Does the sky have a surface area as described in your citation? No, the a ground does. Oh, it doesn't. What, in your fundy world of sky vacuums? So your citation backs our point, then. You need a surface area, mate, and your sky doesn't have one. No, the ground I does. I no, have the citation. ground does, but the sky doesn't. Well, that's pretty useless, given that we're arguing about your fundy belief in a sky vacuum. Yeah, mate? So who gives a shit what the ground's doing? What about when it bounces off the ground and goes up towards your sky vacuum? What's it pressing on there? Has it got a per inch value? Oh, it hasn't got a per inch value. It's got a bloody vacuum to disperse into in your fundy world, hasn't it, Zanik? Funny. I'm he's sharing just, his citation. You can't ignore the most obvious, obvious points. It's unbelievable. Okay, where's the point? Where's the answer to the question in this citation? Or, I'm sorry, in this that reference, the you didn't give a citation. The exerts a large pressure on objects and the surface of the Earth, equal to the weight of a bowling ball pressing on the air of a human thumbnail. Uh, we already been through this friggin' yeah. two That's weeks ago. Question. Yeah, yeah. It's been so basic. I don't know why it's so hard yeah, to understand. It's so basic. You don't understand gas behavior. How do gases behave? They expand in all directions. They expand in all directions unless acted upon by another force. No. Or you said, thing. where is this citation in this reference, Zanuck? That the force creates the pressure? I already explained I, that. I, we asked you for a Gas citation and you give us a reference, right? Force. Why do we have to struggle with this? Do you know the difference between a citation and a reference? Tell us yes. specifically Here's where in your reference what you read Atmospheric was. Atmospheric off. Atmospheric pressure is... I'm going to shut him up. He's not telling us. We're asking yeah. him where in the reference is the citation. He just keeps saying what he's already said. No, what's wrong with I think, I think I got Listen. it. Go ahead. Pressure is it this? caused by the weight of a column of air molecules in the atmosphere above an object. Okay, let's That's read that. I'm going to read that again. Here it is right here. Atmospheric pressure is caused by the weight of a column of air molecules. That's horseshit. In the atmosphere above an object, such as a tanker car. No worries. Hold on, Zanik. Hold on. 
atmospheric pressure is caused by the column above it pressing down. Can you just scroll up to the di hold on John, can you just scroll up to the diagram that's above there please? Do you see at the top of this uh, upside down diamond thing? Yeah. That just shows that it's it's just, just my question was can you see can you see was my question can you see Pardon? that the upside down diamond thing is it in front of you your citation yes or no the upside diamond is not a diamond it's actually a column of air one square inches from the bottom can to the you top see of the it is my question what you, what's your question can you see it <laughs> of course i see it excellent according to your citation it's the weight of the stuff above it pressing down that causes the pressure, according to your citation. Now, I'm going to, for the audience's benefit, wave my mouse above the top of that, what I call diamond, above the top of it. I would like to know what is pressing down on that column where your fundy belief in a sky vacuum is. Please. The air is pressing down. No, there's no air the there, dick brain. I'm saying where the vacuum is. Yeah? Where the sky meets the vacuum. In this crude depiction, it's got atmosphere like a little halo around a quarter of a sphere. This area. But beyond it is your fundy sky vacuum belief. And I'm asking in the depiction, in its scale, where it's describing the top of the atmosphere... What's it pressing on there? There's a vacuum at the top of that blue area, yes. No, there isn't, mate. According to your description, it needs something pressing on top of it, not a vacuum to disperse into, because as John points out, gas expands in all directions. So not only is there nothing above this to press down on it, as per your description, the gas wants to expand in all directions. And what do you know? The area that it can expand into is a lower pressure system, and the second law of thermodynamics would involve entropy increase. The gas would fill the space. There's certainly nothing above it in this depiction for it to, for it to press down on a column, which, as John Lightly points out, is our utter horseshit. Air is not a column. It's got no bonds. Because you don't understand. People always mock what they don't understand. That You're just telling me I don't understand. I'm asking a question. What is above... The quoted column of gas, horseshit, to press down on it as per your description. I gave you the description, and it is the weight of the column of air above you. Above it is a vacuum. There is no air above it. There's nothing to press down on it. I'm asking what's above it. Like when I asked earlier, and you said, the ground. You seem to be dancing away from the part that I'm asking you to talk about. What's above pressing down on the top of the atmosphere according to this depiction not the ground the sky and you're saying that there's stuff air above it pressing down there isn't in this depiction we've got the bit that's your fundy sky vacuum an area of lower pressure for the gas to disperse into it's certainly not pressing down on it on ranting oh well now i'm being accused of ranting am i while he rumpuses me i kept your line closed stupid idiot I'm not going to let this concise demolition of your fundy belief with this cartoon depiction of an Earth as a sphere with a sky vacuum presented here in white go to miss with you telling me I don't understand. I understand. This is horseshit. The description says that the weight of the stuff above pressing down is what gives you the pressure in a column of something that's expanding in all directions. It's not a column. That's nonsense. The description, the citation's garbage because it doesn't work when you get to the top. When you get to this part, above the little blue halo, yeah? What's pressing down here? Oh, well, it's not pressing at all. It's a lower pressure system. The gas would want to expand in all directions, Zanik. Now, I'm in no doubt whatsoever if I check my desk that you're absolutely rumpusing the living shit out of my concise demolition so that you can bleat and moan rather than addressing my concise demolition, Zanik. A demolition of what? The gas that you claim is produced by the weight of the air above it. And I'm asking, 
above this triangle where we've got this white representation of a fundamentalist religious belief in a sky vacuum, what's it pressing on there? To stop entropy increase. What would be necessitated by NASA's description as an enclosure, a container. Well, we don't have that in this depiction. We've got a fundamentalist sky vacuum belief, a description of the stuff above pressing down, and a lower pressure system for it to expand into. Yes, and the cartoon is misleading as well, because the way so it's I, drawn, I it has you. a black box surrounding it, while in the picture next to it, it's suddenly a surface. So it misleadingly... So we, we so all understand it is a surface above law, and ideal not. versus real. And now I'm talking about air above you having a gradient of pressure going up with distance because every square, every cubic inch of air. I don't give a shit what you're talking about. You've given us a citation and we're ripping it a new one. Now you want to talk about what you're talking about. You've given us a citation and we said we'd rip it to pieces. Now we're doing so. You're not addressing anything you we say. Your depiction you in your citation while you rumpus us. Because it's all you've got, haven't you? Crap little citation and a load of obfuscation. Yeah, your citation doesn't work, <laughs> Zanet. It says the stuff pressing down from above gives you the pressure. And there's nothing above your little triangle. Your little diamond doesn't have anything above it. It's got a fundy sky vacuum above it, hasn't it, mate? You, you think that that whole triangle has a, 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 the same pressure from bottom to top. It doesn't. It has a gradient. Every cubic meter foot inch of air you're just doing what you've done twice before when i said i don't care what you're saying your citation says that it's the gas above it pressing down that gives it pressure now that's what it claims about earth and i'm saying there's nothing above the stuff at the top nathan can i ask you a question no your citation's garbage mate we've smashed you you've been obliterated now you want to ask me something what another obfuscation of the fact that this citation's garbage you don't have anything that conforms with the description in the very citation of stuff being above to press down you don't have that you've got a sky vacuum this is a whole citation is to prove your fundy sky vacuum by demolishing nasa's claim that you need an enclosure a container to press upon this is what you've presented, and it says that the stuff above pressing down is what gives you the pressure. There's nothing above it. Yes, air is above every... No! Air is not above it. The white bit is not representing air. It's representing your fundy sky vacuum belief. Do you understand how pool pressure works? How Oh, well, now we're going to obfuscate and move the goalposts, like Brenda accuses us of. No, your citation doesn't have anything above the triangle as depicted as atmosphere it's a little halo going around a cartoon sphere earth that you think you live on zanik daddy boy hey listen what causes pressure at the bottom me? of the pool what did you call me what does what, what did causes you call pressure at the bottom of the pool flatty boy so it's just an ad hominem attack now rather than an address to what's pressing down i've asked you three times and you've said the air above it and I point out that the bit above it hasn't got any air it's supposed to be a vacuum in your sky fundy vacuum belief and you won't address it. You just keep saying airs above it. All these like questions water about above, things pressing water down is giving him a headache, Nathan. Oh. Do you understand how water pressure works in a... Now he's going to obfuscate and move to a different equivalence. False equivalence fallacy. No. In your depiction, the citation you provided to back your argument that force can maintain gas pressure without a container is this garbage where the description in the citation says that it needs to pressing down from above and in the depiction there's nothing above the only way to get pressure is a container. it's just rumpusing he's not even listening to the questions anymore so that he won't make a terrible answer you just you're just a scumbag zealot fundy answer water me, Zanik. pressure at the bottom of the pool is created the same way that air pressure is made in the atmosphere it's claimed to be made by stuff above it pressing down in this citation that you've given us, Sonic. There's nothing above it. I want you to address it. And every time I say it, I watch his line dance. So he doesn't have to answer. What well, scumbag. The audience can hear how clearly I'm asking. The fact that you can't hear it because you talk over the top of me, Sonic, doesn't change the fact the audience knows you're obfuscating this point. Because it absolutely destroys your fundy sky vacuum belief. Actually, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. You won't answer the question. What's being, what's pressing down from above where the vacuum is? That's what the citation says is required. The weight of the air is pressing down on the weight of the air below it. 
Yeah, and I've just asked you keep doing the same thing and saying there's air above when there's a vacuum above. There's no weight of it. It's a vacuum. No, What's vacuum pressing down a above that? Pressure. There's no vacuum it's just above. obfuscating. It's not even Anik, listening Anik. anymore. Zanik, how is the vacuum? The vacuum is differential pressure. You've got three words out, Arwin. To press on the everything. How does the vacuum press on it? You won't get an answer. He's gone into triggered fundy mode and he's just now rumpus in the Discord non-stop. He literally isn't stopping. So rather than it be clear when he can't give an answer or declare that he can't give an answer, he'll go to the ground, obfuscate and rumpus. It's all he's got left. I'm not rumpusing. I'm just trying to give you an explanation. You're not listening. So, so how does the vacuum press on the low gas pressure? How does a vacuum press on the low gas pressure? Yes. If you continue <laughs> this model that no, you are presuming. The, the weight of the air is pressing there, so down how on the weight of the air below. It... He's saying the weight of the air above. That's what he used on me. Well, there is no air above. There's a vacuum above. So there's no weight to press down. But every time I make this concise argument, I watch his level in Discord dance all over the place so he can obfuscate it. He's thinking he's not letting the audience hear it. But I'm just going to keep him here indefinitely while he obfuscates and rumpuses. What's it pressing on where the vacuum is? There's nothing above to press down, Zanik. doesn't have to be. The air itself is pressing down. No, ah. the air isn't because there's a sky vacuum in your fundy belief and in this depiction. And according to the citation, it needs something above it to press down and there isn't anything. So it completely falls on its ass, and all you're doing is talking over me while I do this. The audience is hearing this rumpus. Yeah, they're hearing you yeah. don't let me speak. I think That's you're right. a bit they're confused hearing. because the earth is underneath it, not above it. So that's a, Correct. Yeah, that's that's the surface which it's pressing here. upon. That is the surface for which it's pressing upon. Every cubic meter of air above it is pressing on another cubic meter below it, and so on. All oh, really? Yeah. So what about what this about part? Above? What about above? Exactly. So that's where you say everything above it's pressing on the stuff below. Above it in this instance is a vacuum. Do you, do you have and no more all he's doing in the background, like I'm showing the audience by nothing unmuting him, is rumpusing. So Arwin's right. made it concisely. I've made it concisely. He's got nothing but obfuscation and rumpusing. He well, cannot can listen and address the question. I in two different ways, entertaining both presuppositions. So either, like, how does the vacuum press, press on the lower air pressure that continues that cycle? Or what is the lower... Uh, pressure zone pressing against above it. The lower I, doesn't press on anything. Question. Vacuum doesn't do anything. Vacuum's just nothing. Okay, so the the first one's not going to work. So the second one. So the weight of the air above it, even at the the, the most no, least no, dense no, above the, the air. air, above See, the air where there's no air. You asked me a question. I'm trying to explain, and then you yeah, because you said you said the weight of the air that's above it, and Arwin's trying desperately where you obfuscate so that you don't have to answer about the fundy sky vacuum bit about the sky vacuum bit and how that's not capable of pressing down you said it's not anything well if it's not anything it's not going to be pressing on anything then is it Zanik? no the air is pressing not the vacuum yeah so we're saying what's pressing on the top of the air and you keep obfuscating that the air itself is pressing no the air itself isn't there in the vacuum so round and round we go with you obfuscating at the top there's a vacuum and vacuum's nothing. It can't press on the air. That's why the that's why the pressure is lower as you go up, because there's less of it. Pressure needs to press. And in your fundy sky vacuum world, according to this citation, the weight of the stuff above causes the pressure. That's wrong, Zanik, because there is no weight of the stuff above if there's a vacuum above. So this citation is garbage. I'm now going to take it off screen because it's useless and definitely doesn't answer the question of how you can have gas pressure without a container but what it does is show a visual representation of your fundamentalist belief in a sky vacuum it definitely isn't a demonstration it's a cartoon so you don't understand that gas pressure is created by gas acting on itself that's not what we've asked you to provide a citation that demonstrates that and you haven't managed it according to the citation you have provided the weight of the air above it gives rise to the pressure below but that falls on its ass when you've got a vacuum that can't create any pressure above it because then there's nothing to press down upon it 
so your citation is garbage. It's now been taken off screen because it's pointless and doesn't back your claim that you can have gas pressure from a force. You can't. Your bloody cartoon isn't going to cut it. The pressure is caused by the weight of the air acting on itself downward. That's it. Yeah, there isn't any weight of the air where the vacuum is. Uh, how many times have I got to say this? It falls on its ass because you've got a sky vacuum. That's the beginning and end of the argument. That's the reason it doesn't work. Claiming it's just because you've got a vacuum and it gets thinner doesn't change the fact that you'd have entropy increase. The gas would fill the space. It wants to expand in all directions. And if there's only a void for it to expand into, that's precisely what it'll do. Second law of thermodynamics. So to just keep asserting, as a fundy does, that we've just got a sky vacuum isn't going to cut it. Giving us a cartoon that stands in violation of its own definition because it says the weight of the air above gives rise to the pressure below and you've got a vacuum above it. That, again, is self-contradictory. Self There's a vacuum of air. The vacuum of air? Now he's just making up terms. It all is differential pressure as you go up there's less and less air creating less and less weight that it's acting upon yeah until you get to the top and then there's nothing for it to press upon in your fundamentalist religious zealot world of sky vacuums and spheres in that instance if the sky was a vacuum entropy would increase and the gas would fill the space showing us a cartoon that claims that the weight of the air above gives rise to the pressure below doesn't answer the question of how you have gas pressure next to a vacuum in your fundy sky vacuum world. It doesn't give us an answer to that. It contradicts itself. So it's garbage. We don't know. You understand that there's a gradient. That air yeah. acting on yep, air goes down as you go up in altitude because there's less of it. It's lovely. How do you yeah, have gas pressure gradient. without a container? You have how do you have gas pressure without a container? Gas pressure without a container. Yeah, how do you have gas pressure without a container? So it's you all well and good talking air, about... Acting on the weight of the air it creates pressure. I just explained it to you. How do you have a container? gradient without a container? Okay, well, well, well in that example, you in your explanation, you can't have a vacuum at the top then. Yes. There's, there's no way to press down on the stuff below it. How the vacuum is defined. Yeah, there's, Less your density. explanation can't have a vacuum at the top, Zanik, because if you've got a vacuum at the top, there's no weight to it to press down on the stuff below. As you go up, the, the, there's less weight of the air above you. So Yes, until there's none. So <laughs> gas, which would want to expand in all directions, would want to expand into it. That would be entropy increase. Yeah. So if you continue that line of reasoning, Zanik, you literally end up with an outer gas universe. Yeah, you There's no have... other way. You can't have a sky vacuum if you with your need to continually some kind of gas to press on it, that means that it's all filled with the gas. The gravity so is downward. Might be, might be. I've suggested that. Not listening to a word you say, Arwin. It's just rumpusing the crap out of the Discord server. I'm listening. <sighs> yeah. What did Arwin just say then? <laughs> he doesn't understand how. There could be a vacuum. That's a declaration of what you oh, think oh, his beliefs are. Oh, no, no, no. That's the previous argument. I, I guess you didn't hear me. Rumpusing. What, what did you say? Uh, What's the gas okay. pressing on at the top? Arnon, what did you say? What's the gas pressing on at the top, Zanik? Right. There's, there's gas pressure uh, at the top, yes. What's it pressing on? Uh, yes. Yes, there's gas pressure pressing down at No. The top. What's it pressing <laughs> on at the top? Down, it's pressing on the... No, air. you keep saying down. <laughs> up, up at the top, where your sky vacuum is. I know you don't want to talk about your sky vacuum, but we want to know about the sky vacuum, Fundy, and what gas right. would press upon if the sky was a vacuum. So, if I may repeat just, myself, are you listening, Zanuck? It means nothing. It means nothing. Nothing's there. Zanuck, are you listening? Yes. Shall I now repeat myself? Please. Okay, thank you. So what I uh, said is, Zanek, if you follow this train of thought con continually, say, yeah, there's just more gas pressing on that, and above that is more, you literally end up with an outer gas universe, which is an alternative no. that I have suggested. That's not true at all. Hmm? 
Why would you say well, that? It basically that? fills the vacuum with some gas. No, All not unless it. there's a force acting on the gas, which there is. Yeah, no, oh, really? Vacuum. How do you know? Because NASA said it? No, because we all agree gas has weight. Even that's what? Citation. No, that's not what I was talking about. Gas has pressure. Uh, look, gas I was talking about if you continue this gas. train of thought, you will literally fill up all the vacuum because it you will continually have no. a need for more gas to press upon it forever. So, yeah, no, maybe the see, outer space you, is not you, outer you space, but vacuum, outer gas. Vacuum is not, not a force. Vacuum is not a force. The gas pressure is the Everybody force. Said it was. And why is it not act? You're, so your question is, let me understand. If it's not a force, this, yeah, how can it press on the gas below? Gas how can it press on the gas below then? If it's not a force, how can it press on the gas below it? How can it press on the, the gas that. below, Zanik? If it's not a force, uh, how can it press on the gas below as per your citation? Exactly. I just told you, the weight of the, weight of the air is the force. No, no you if didn't. If the vacuum <laughs> is not a force... How can it press on the gas below? In a direct... Just rumpusing straight he's to just, No, he's just taking more air, putting it on top of it. He's building yeah. a, a giant air tower into infinity. Yeah. That's yeah, why I said, it, just it convert goes, to the outer gas universe higher and higher. Higher. your problem yes. rumpus is again. More rumpus The force goes down. The force, do, the force, which is the weight, goes down as you go higher. And yes. does a vacuum have a force? No. So what's it pressing on? Vacuum the gas. Vacuum have force. So how can it a be pressing on rum rumpus rumpus i want one opportunity to ask you this without you interrupting and actually listening to the question if a vacuum is not a force and your citation describes the stuff above pressing down how can the vacuum be pressing down on the gas below it every force needs a magnitude in a, in a direction the vacuum has no... We're not talking about a force, though, are we? We're talking about a vacuum that doesn't have a force, him, him. and he's instantaneously Sorry, talking about a force. When I'm specifically no, no, no. talking, on, I asked him... He was for... actually giving an answer this time. Well, no. I asked him for clarity. Is a vacuum a force? He said no. So we've got something that's not a force being described. Oh, and come I asked, on. I want to hear I it. I asked Steve. him... Yes, it really ruined my point when I'm finally getting him to actually listen. Thank you, Armin. Sorry, but... Yeah, so we've got him describing something that's definitely not a force, and I don't need any qualification about what forces do when a vacuum's not a force. But according to his citation, the stuff above presses on the stuff below, and the vacuum can't do anything because it's not a force. Can I answer the question? Will you let me answer the question uninterrupted? No. Will you let me answer the question uninterrupted? Yes, please go, please. Okay, I haven't been able to as of this point. Okay, so you say that something above is pressing down. Yes, the weight of the air. The vacuum is not stuff. That's by definition. That's where you're wrong. The vacuum is not stuff. The air is the stuff. And the stuff is pushing down on itself all the way to the surface. That creates the pressure. And yes, Arn, it goes down as you go up. The pressure goes down because there's less and less of this stuff above it until there's very little stuff, and then it becomes more of a pure vacuum. But it's vacuum at every level above the surface. More and more, uh, less and less density as you go up. It becomes more and more vacuum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all you're saying is space. nothing. You didn't okay. answer the question. So what is pressing on the top of your little friggin' inverted pyramid here? Yeah, it's, this it's system a requires a chain that, of that's, force. That's funny. Every that's layer keeps the other layer in. Inch. That's the issue. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't just happily sit there. It's a chain. It it's a consequential chain of layers of force that are all in need to be pressing there or it won't stay. That's, that's the entire yes. setup. Yes, yes. So, what yes. The so how can that top layer then just sit there with a vacuum it's pressing, pressing it's on press, it. It's pressing that can't down work. The with, force with, has to come from somewhere. Go, go to obfuscate. Where is it coming on from? On it. I'm talk, trying to talk to you. Listen, there is a force. Can you talk? What you're doing is you're talking through everyone else, ignoring their question because you're talking through them constantly, then asking three or four times if you can talk un uninterrupted when no one's interrupting you because you've got into such a habit of doing it while other people are talking. So you don't have to listen to the question. So... The question is, what is pressing down on the top 
of the diamond thing in your example, where there's a vacuum in your fundy world, what could possibly be pressing on top of that gas pressure, and you'll automatically go to the ground, obfuscate, claim you're not going to get an opportunity to talk. You've asked, been asked it in five different ways by three different people. John was the most recent. He said, what's pressing on the top of that triangle? The air that is on, to on top of the triangle. No, there isn't any air. The it's depicting the end of the air where the vacuum is. That's what it's depicting in your graphic on your reference. Nothing in space is pressing down on that triangle. Well, then the gas would fill the space. Because according to your reference, it needs something above it pressing in order to be pressure. So if there's nothing pressing on it, then it's just going to expand in all directions. That's what gas does. So this is a horse shit absolute rubbish useless reference and citation because it describes only the stuff above giving rise to the pressure below and you're saying that the vacuum's not a force it's not doing anything well it can't be pressing on the gas then it's not pressing vacuum's not pressing on the gas well then the gas would fill the space entropy would increase and we would have no gas gas pressure the res the necessary antecedent the requirement to have gas pressure is the walls of a container you need to press on a surface a surface area a per inch squared to get that value of how much it presses and your depiction says it's only the stuff above and then in the depiction you've got something that isn't anything and doesn't force anything anywhere it's a vacuum so it's garbage sonic total garbage actually it's not i showed you pressure without a container no you didn't several times no, you showed yes, a cartoon of your of a car. Then you down. avoided the question perpetually and persistently, without hesitation, systematically. You evaded the question. Yeah, what's pressing on the top of this triangle? Where the, the gas the it. is at its thinnest. It doesn't matter if you push this out and make the scale a million a miles. Man. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> he yeah. said the weight of the air above it is pressing down. Yeah, that's a straw man <laughs> because there supposedly second, isn't air above the there. Right. The, uh, yes, I mean, exactly. I went the weight made of the air breakfast. Above it. Yes. I went and made breakfast. A four course breakfast and came back and the same question was still being asked without an answer. What's your problem, Sonic? John, I Why gave the answer. They don't want to listen to it. Why can't you answer this, Sonic? I said the vacuum does not a force that the air above the air above the column is pressing down on that column. There is no air above the column, it's a vacuum. You're no, the column itself. The no, <laughs> above it. <laughs> above it. We keep you saying above it. The vacuum, then you mention the air layer. So those are two different things. We're supposed to be talking about a singular thing. What is above it? I can't help if you can understand the concept. We do understand the concept. Oh, really? we, we also understand that you've obfuscated this probably in excess of 20 times now. Probably more. Because we're saying what presses down on the top of that triangle when it's a vacuum that has no force and cannot press. And you say, well, it's the weight of the air above it. And there is no <laughs> air above it. It's a vacuum in this depiction. Force. I said that very clearly. The air has the weight. The air no, there's no air in this white bit. We keep going round and round in circles, Anik, and you won't address it. What's pressing down on the top of this triangle? If that's the top, yeah, and there's apparently gas according to your fundy spherification with gas next to a vacuum. And we're saying, according to the description, it's the weight of the stuff above it. And you keep saying, yeah, it's the weight of the stuff above it. But in the depiction, there isn't anything above it. There's a vacuum that cannot press and isn't a force. Then that's not creating a force there, is it? Oh, well, then the gas would fill the space. Entropy would increase. Your sky vacuum's demolished. There is no sky vacuum. There can't be. Because yep. the you gas... You keep falling for the same trick like a dog. This is really weirding me out. Yeah, he's he's a fundy. A fundy zealot with a sky vacuum belief. You done, Zanuck? No. The vacuum <laughs> is not a force. The, the air does not escape into the vacuum because it has a force acting on it. It has weight. Just like you don't fly into the air. Standing on the ground. Why don't you fly upward? What's the weight well, of the vacuum? Well, I'm not a gas. What's the, weight, <laughs> what's the weight of the vacuum then? If you were a gas. If what's you the were weight? a gas, why doesn't the gas fly upward? You said we've got weight. What's the weight of the vacuum to press down on the top of this triangle There's here? There's no weight of the vacuum. There's no oh, well, it's not pressing down on the top as per your description. We keep going around and around in circles. If there's no weight to this the vacuum, it's literally a poking a stick at a dog on a chain, guys. This is getting really... Yeah, no, fundies. I, I, I don't mind doing people. this. I don't, I'll do this. And, and roll out the next 10 minutes doing it. I don't mind. That's what fundies are like. He's, 
He cannot answer the question. He'll obfuscate and claim martyrdom and say he's being talked over and not given an opportunity, even though I'll give him an opportunity right now with a concise repetition. What, given that you believe the sky is a vacuum, depicted by the white area in your citation, is pressing down on the top of where the gas pressure ends, according to this depiction, as presented on the screen by the top of the triangle? What's pressing on that if the sky vacuum has no force? The sky vacuum has no force. The air density goes lower and lower as you go higher and higher until it's nothing. And anytime there is something, it is pressing down on the molecules below it because of its mass. <laughs> okay. And, and what, and and what where, is pressing above that? Yeah, and where that? there is nothing, what's pressing does it, down? How does it start? How does Ugh. that pressure manifest? Out of a vacuum, basically. How you didn't even work? listen to what he said. It was absolute buffoonery. What do you mean? <laughs> what a joke. But I am curious nothing. now as so to the theory pressing. as to how this pressure chain manifests literally out of a vacuum. Kind of reminds me of the Big Bang it theory. It manifests out of a vacuum. It manifests from the ground. There is weight of the air stacked on top of itself as you go higher. I don't know why that's so hard to understand. Until there's nothing left. Any molecules of left. Any right. Right. And, and that chain of pressure it, causes the overall pressure, right? So that has this, it's like a chain. So what, where does it start? Molecules, How does it start? How does that pressure chain start out of a vacuum? Yeah, I'm where to get the gas curious. pressure from in the first place? Right, Arwen? <laughs> <laughs> because any, Arwen, Arwen, if he has mass, it's attracted to the earth. That's where it gets oh, its God. pressure from. No, but that belief. doesn't work with the same theory. That's sure, it does. Approach. Absolutely does. No, it doesn't. If you have a molecule that's of air, no, that's a Newtonian it claim. Will it'll continue to travel toward the Earth until it bumps into another air molecule, and it'll stack up all the way to the ground. What about the ones going up? Pardon me. What do you mean? Ones, the ones going, going up? up, the ones not going towards the ground, because they're going all directions. Gas particles. Oh, so. we're, talking about, we're talking about something different now. We're talking about air currents. Okay, we can talk about air currents if you no, like. No, any gas expanding in all directions. Yes. It hits the ground not and then heads up towards. It heads up towards. It heads up towards. It heads up towards the lower pressure system no. that you believe. Why am I only being allowed to get two or three sentences out? What's what's the problem, Zanik? Is is it a, is it a problem for you to listen to me talking? So, we the particle bounces just... off the ground, ah. and then it heads towards the lower pressure system, the fundy belief in a lower pressure system known as the vacuum of the sky. Why doesn't it just continue, and every what? single other particle that's done the same and bounced off the ground also expand in all directions into the sky vacuum? Why doesn't that happen? So... You seem not you seem unable to understand that molecules move around because they're energetic, air molecules specifically, and they will go up and down and move around independent of the pressure. That is pressure. Okay, so you have hot pressure created by the air above it. So as you have cool. weight of the air on top of the atmosphere pushing down on every successive set of molecules below it, the pressure increases. Yeah, That's not gas success. behavior. Every That's not gas behavior. Des describe gas behavior. Temperature based on densities, relative densities. That's all independent. Describe this that gas behavior. What do gases do? They move around. In they move. Freely and randomly at high speed. So how can they be That's laying right. on top of each other? Based, based on their densities and energy levels. How can and things that are moving randomly at high uh, speeds upwards. in all directions lay on top of each if other? If that was the case, if that was true, if that was exactly true, then we'd have no air pressure because it'd be yo no shit, Sherlock. What do you think we've been what? trying to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No shit. Yeah, we'd have no gas pressure. That's our point. No, we or we measure gas pressure. Fourteen. Yeah, therefore we can't have a sky vacuum because we've got gas pressure. Go up. Why does it go down as we go up? doesn't make any difference it's still gas pressure so we have gas pressure so we can't possibly have a sky vacuum for it to disperse into because the gas pressure would expand in all directions entropy would increase it's the second law of thermodynamics you can't have gas pressure without a container it's just that simple why does pressure go down as we go up 
because we've got gas created at ground level and not in the middle of the sky. So the concentration what? of gases is what was that highest. Answer? I'm giving an answer, you complete prick. Right? Every time I talk, you decide that mid-answer you need to talk, Sanit. You're an asshole. I understand why you're an asshole. Because we're taking a dump on your religion. Your religion of balls in vacuums with gases attached to them that aren't expanding in all directions, that are defying the second law of thermodynamics, that are not experiencing entropy increase. This is all a big problem for you, isn't it, Zanik? That's why you need to talk all over every word I say. Because you're a fundy. This is your religion. It's just not true. The sky is not a vacuum. Entropy would increase, and the gas we breathe would fill the space. The fact we have gas pressure means the sky is not a vacuum, Zanik. Why does gas pressure go down as you go up, Nathan? Where'd you get gas pressure? Let me explain the question. It. I, I have an explanation. Why, why do you? Why does gas pressure go gas down, 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 down as you go down up? Here because there is more no, temperature down, down here because that is where all the sunlight, all the daylight, gets absorbed and creates most of the heat in this realm. It's all being absorbed there. So that's continual pressure basically being created down. Yeah, I already answered him. I said. Gases are created at ground level and not in the middle of the sky. They decrease with altitude because the most highest concentration is where they are produced. So I already answered Zanik. So the gas pressure is produced by where the gas press gases are pre being produced. Asshole. I don't want to argue about gas pressure gradient when we're asking where you get the gas pressure from in the first instance. Do you think I'm so stupid as to let you take me on this little path of arguing about what creates a gradient? I've answered you. I'm correct. That's why we have a gradient. Now you answer me. What's the gas pressing on at the top by your fundy zealot belief in a sky vacuum? The weight of the gas you're talking about is creating the pressure or the weight. Uh, his cognitive dissonance is permanently set. Yep. Dug in like oh, an yeah. Alabama tick. That's what causes the pressure. Somebody tackle the him with a spoon and dig that shit out. Yes, yeah, Anik. It's, it's tragic, mate. You do, you keep obfuscating you're the question the because you, you, we go to the by top, the gas is and when I point out that you obfuscate the question, you s immediately start talking because I'm talking right, and I'm going to be the one concisely de demolishing your religious fundamentalist belief in a sky vacuum because the gas would fill space, Anik can't have gas pressure without a container, Zanik. It needs to press on something, Zanik. And you think the sky is a vacuum. The air is what causes the pressure. There is no air. Vacuum, mate. Your fundy belief is in a vacuum. You keep talking about the air that we have. And we're talking about your fundy belief in a vacuum. Which isn't air. It's the absence of air. Yeah? That's what we're talking about. And in your graphic depiction, it shows that you've just got this layer with no layer, with no surface, just an end to your gas pressure gradient. And then the vacuum begins. And the gas, well, it's not disappearing into the vacuum as entropy would dictate. Oh, no, no, no. It's the air above it that's pressing down on it. Well, there isn't any air above it, you stupid moron. Stupid moron. You yeah, stupid moron. You yeah. keep saying that it's the air above it that presses down. And when we say, no, the vacuum isn't air, it's not pressing. And you keep telling us it's not a force. It's not doing anything. But when we ask you, well, what's pressing on the gas at the top? Yeah, how is the vacuum pressing down on it? You tell us about how it's gradiated to the top. You don't explain your fundy mm. sky vacuum belief. You just well, rumpus you the crap what? out of the Discord server continually. So all you can uh -huh. do... I have a, a small idea to approach it slightly different. Maybe it'll help him. So officially, there is a supposed pressure chart, uh, a distance from the Earth up until where the supposed vacuum would be. So maybe we should just say what is pressing on that very, 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 very low gas pressure exact number right there above it, where official vacuum should be maybe we have to be more specific 
All they do is change the tour values and push the gradient further out to make it seem like it's plausible when it isn't. You can't have gas pressure without a container. And with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of today's debating panel for making this debate possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you tuned in for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!